Hey everyone, today we have a few exciting tips and tricks to help you uh, get the most out of the Comfy platform. Uh, apologize in advance, my uh, voice is a little crackly. I'm getting over a cold, but as the AI world doesn't sleep, uh, I do not either. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to talk through is an updated loader. Uh, you know, previously we talked about having a standard uh, set of nodes that we want to use for loading. Uh, I usually typically look in my node templates. Uh, I have a loader there as well. But what I found best is actually having a standard, you know, loading uh, JSON ready to go, uh, because then that's your kind of starting point, right? Any type of creative work you're doing, uh, whether you're going to do some in painting or just just text to uh, image creation, you're going to want to be able to focus on different types of, of media creations. But at the very beginning, you're always going to want to start with uh, typically a loading area. And so I created this. So this is going to be available via link in the description. It has a few elements in it that really, I think, are really good for, for those that are especially that are getting started, not, not knowing where to start. Uh, this is really helpful. So first of all, if I'm just going to zoom in here, right, we have from the last video a fast group uh, bypasser. Uh, this is going to be helpful because then you can easily turn on and off uh, any sort of, if you're going to do face detailing with portraiture, if you're going to do any sort of in painting, it automatically lets you load the models that are necessary to just jump right in. Uh, this pairs really well then when you start to get going with your your node template. So like if I wanted to do in painting, I could enable the nodes and then right away go to my nodes and then my in painting and all of a sudden I have everything kind of ready to go. It's very valuable and powerful that way to basically get right into whatever elements of media creation you want without having a humongous workflow uh, to have to run through. Uh, secondly, you also have then a default uh, model ready to go. Um, right now I have the Sleipner STXL Turbo. It's currently the top leaderboard model, but uh, if you go to the link with the top STXL models, lots and lots of really great models to choose from, uh, and we're updating it all the time with some high quality rigorous testing. Um, and then finally your prompts, right? So you have some global prompts, <clears throat> which is very helpful. If you're going to be doing this uh, multiple times with different types of uh, in painting uh, or image to image work, um, I basically have this connected to the prompts anywhere, uh, which then will beam it to any of my samplers that I need. And then of course I can hardwire as you've seen in some of my recent videos. In fact, all of these models are wired into the anything anywhere. Uh, and this is in the use everywhere nodes. Hats off to them. This is a really powerful node. I've been using it a lot now. Uh, this lets you basically not have to hardwire everything together, um, but definitely check out the previous video. Uh, it'll definitely help you along the way. Okay, let's get on to something that has plagued me uh, from the very beginning, which is <clears throat> even with some of the text-oriented uh, nodes out there, there wasn't really a way to quickly preview the fonts I had available to be able to use. You know, obviously in some of the professional tools, the Photoshops, etc. You have little, you know, itty bitty windows to be able to see at least what it would kind of look like, even if it's just the text uh, font name. Well, this is really powerful. This is the Comfy Roll Studio. You'll notice that the name has changed just from Comfy Roll to Comfy Roll Studios now. Um, you don't have to do anything other than just simply updating your custom node in your manager. It's the same library. Um, but what you'll see in this workflow is basically, if I run it here, uh, it lets you preview the text in the actual font. Uh, you can change the font size, the color. Another cool node that I found recently is this Mixlab node, uh, this color node. Uh, there's a lot of cool uh, functions outside of color, but I found this one to be very effective because uh, if I want to select a custom color, I don't have to guess what the hex is anymore. I can just simply click it and choose what color I want to select. So it's very cool. It pipes out a uh, hex value for the color. You can see as I render, it automatically gets to you to you want. So you can obviously do a lot here very quickly around background color selection and whatever. And all I did here was I brought this color node in. And wherever there's a uh, sort of hex value color that's needed, 
instead of that, I'm just right clicking that node and I'm choosing to turn that into an input, right? And then just, just piping that string, which is a hex value into that node. This is one of my quick load workflows that I have kind of ready to go whenever I need it so I can do a quick preview and, and selection. Uh, speaking of which, another custom node that's gonna be very valuable uh, is the uh, quick load here. So obviously by default, you have a load button, um, but you'll notice sometimes some people will have this little down arrow. And if I click it here, I actually have some workflows that I usually go to as my quick go-tos um, right there, ready to go. Obviously I can click the load button and load a specific one. I have lots and lots of workflows available now, um, but there's ones I go to all the time. And so like, for example, that loader one that we just talked about before, that's right there, ready to go. And so the question is, well, how do you get this little drop down and where do you put the files? So if you go to your manager and go to your install custom nodes, if you um, search for uh, PYTH like Python, it's Python Goss. I've actually uh, featured this a uh, few different times uh, in different workflows as well, um, but it, it's this custom scripts one. So if you enable, if you install this one, once you do that, that down arrow will then become available to you. Uh, but then of course, well, where do you put the files? So if you go to your stable diffusion, uh, your comfy kind of root folder, there's a subfolder called PYSSSSSSS workflows. You put it in there, and then when you refresh your screen, your workflows will then be available. All right, next we're going to talk about some updates to Canvas. Canvas has had a lot of updates. The username Lurk uh, on the Discord channel really uh, hats off to you. Lots of very valuable updates that you've made to Canvas recently. Um, so shout out there for sure. Um, couple of major items to be aware of. So first of all, um, I have a workflow here. I have a steaming bowl of soup for a sick person. That's me, um, but we're working through it. Um, but you could see here, right? We have our, our sick person and no, that's not me, uh, but I feel like that anyways. Um, but when, I, uh, you know, when you do a render, of course, sometimes you're gonna want to put stuff into your canvas, but it won't necessarily be in the right final position, right? We had a couple of videos before where you're positioning things individually and moving the XY. Well, thankfully in the Canvas node, there is now a new option to be able to move layers around, which is awesome. There are some caveats to be aware of. Um, for example, you know, just be aware of the clipping that may happen outside of the boundaries, but generally speaking, very, very powerful. So if I go here and edit, I'm gonna have to bring my image in here because uh, I have not done that yet. So as a reminder, right, we're gonna first add a new kind of image layer here because I want it to be nice and fresh. And then I'm going to uh, add a send to editor, right? That's to send to my canvas. And I'm gonna hook that up here and we're gonna run it. Okay, and here we have our, our person here uh, enjoying his soup as he's getting better. Um, but now we're going to add our layer here, right? Because we want to add our some text here to, to feel better. And so we're going to now, what I did, I right clicked. I created a new layer and I right clicked to make it a target. And over here under the incoming images, we're going to replace layer. So whatever we beam in, it's going to beam into this layer as we've done in previous videos. So jumping it back here again, uh, we're going to turn this guy off. Uh, so we do not want to send it in anymore. Uh, but we are going to move up here. And uh, I have a text draw node ready to go, uh, feel better. I chose a font and a color and all that good stuff, right? And uh, I'm using from the previous video, the image color to mask, right? So we're basically taking the black background that is by default in this text uh, image and using black as the mask and then basically taking that and joining that um, into to make it a, a transparent uh, font, just like we did in the last video. So definitely check out that last video as well. And uh, from here, I'm now sending that into my image tab. So I'm going to run it. Okay, and we're going to bring over. And so this is great. Okay, so we have the text here. Maybe this is where we want our text to be. Um, but you know, it kind of distracts being right on top of his head. So I kind of want him to go down below, maybe to the right. And the interesting thing is previously, right, I'd have to then re-replace and re-render and do this over and over and over again. But now you'll notice a couple of new 
uh, items available. So first of all, this transform later shortcut T, and we'll talk about shortcuts in a sec. But if you click that or hit T now, because I have my layer selected, I can now move this to where I wanted to. You can even scale it, but just one of the caveats to be aware of is sometimes if you scale too much, it'll disappear on you. So there's a few, you know, uh, call it uh, areas that you want to be a little careful of. But let's say we want it kind of right there. And uh, as always, let's say I want behind it, I'm going to add a little bit of background color to kind of let it pop and stand out. Now, previously, right, I had to kind of adjust manually my pixel brush size, but thankfully we have shortcuts now. If you use the uh, right and left carrot, those keys next to the P key, it will automatically bring it bigger, which is great. So in this case, we're going to bring it behind our text, and then we're going to draw a little bit behind here just to give it a little bit of kind of pop, right? All right, there we go. Um, okay, and that's it, right? So um, one final note about the shortcuts to be aware of. So we have now, uh, you'll see if you hover over each of these items, those shortcuts are uh, available there. So obviously your go-to is gonna be your brush, B, your eyedropper, P, to select any colors, T for moving things around, um, and you'll be all set. So final check here, obviously we wanna make sure we have selected our current image if it's not and when we come back uh, over here uh, we can see our canvas has everything ready um, one thing that i want to include is because i have my global right so you can see the global uh, prompts are here i'm going to do this manually just so that i can get a little bit more oomph out of the text without having to re-render everything across the board so i'm going to add my mile high styler and we'll just say, sick man, better red text with yellow outline. We're going to add some weight to it. And we're going to add our kitchen. So modern kitchen background hookup. Uh, okay. And now we'll also want to hook up our Mile High Styler to hardwire our prompt in. So we're going to create a clip text encode, right? This is gonna obviously normally take text, but we're going to actually feed it in. So I right clicked and I took and put it text as the input. And we're going to copy control C and control V to paste because one is gonna be our positive and one is gonna be our, our negative. And so we're gonna basically bring that into our positive and our negative here and just make sure under your conditioning, you're doing the same thing, right? We're replacing the global with our hardwired version. So we're going to want to now uh, start to render this and see how this looks. So as always, we're going to play with our denoise a little bit here. Uh, we're going to start pretty low to see how that looks. So let's see how that renders. Uh, it's pretty good. Something's going on with his mouth. So we're going to we're going to now say bad mouth. So we don't want whatever's going on there. Looks like he's bleeding. Ah, oh, there we go. That's a little better. Um, good. All right. So everything seems pretty good. I'm gonna so I'm gonna bring it down one last time, uh, and that should be pretty good. So you can see, uh, pretty effective for getting things hooked up pretty quickly. Okay. Our last example today is around vignettes. A lot of create new uh, custom nodes coming out of Comfy Roll as well around imagery. Uh, so I wanted to highlight that as we're going along. Uh, we're going to start out again, normal sort of loader as always. We're going to start with a puppy in a basket by the fireplace. And uh, just as a reminder, right, this is all hooked up to the use anywhere. So this automatically beams, no wiring needed to our positive and negative prompts, which then loads into our uh, K sampler. Now, one couple items to note here. Uh, one, I am using latent consistency model, LCM. So that's my sampler name. You have a LoRa that you're setting up, right? So you're loading a LoRa. You have an LCM uh, model file that you need to run to reduce your step count and your, your CFG as well. And then you'll get stuff very, very quickly. From here, I've now started to include a vignette filter, right? And there's actually a few different uh, custom nodes that do vignettes. So the Comfy Roll is not the only one, but I found this one's very quick and effective um, and a couple of additional 
cool features about it as well. Uh, but we could see I've created a circle uh, vignette. You can say how much you're going to feather. Feathering, uh, for those that are not familiar with the term, is, is how much kind of fluffiness or blurriness you want kind of to the edges of the circle. So I want it very blurry, as you can see in my resulting image here. Um, and then zoom. Zoom will also tell you kind of how, how much of the main image do you want to see versus the kind of like the blackened outside. Now, the kind of cool innovative thing that we're doing here is we're using the, the blackness uh, that is produced by this vignette and turning that into the mask, right? We're using mask as a way to do fun uh, output. So you could see what I've done is I'm using here, and let me actually, let me jump back here. I am using the <laughs> vignette and I'm using the, the black part of the vignette that's created and putting that into my VAE encode for inpainting. So I'm basically only talking about that black area and not the main image. Why? Because I want to create an external frame for my image, right? So this is beautiful by itself. Um, as a normal portraiture shot, it's great. Uh, pu putting it to the next level, I want to create a cool border. So it's, since it's cold outside, probably part of the reason I have a cold, um, is to be able to have some frost and snow. So it's a frosty texture that we're putting into our Mile High Styler. And we're hardwiring that down to a normal clip text and code, positive and negative, and bringing that into the positive and negative prompt. So there's a little bit of hardwiring here because we just want to do the frosty outside. And then within this secondary sampler, we are just doing a normal you know, uh, render that has the frosty glass texture to use that kind of outside black part. So it's kind of cool. The end result is a nice texture. You could use it almost like as a holiday card, right? Um, by just putting whatever you want on the inside. So hopefully these uh, tips and tricks were very valuable to you. As always, please feel free to subscribe, share with your friends, etc. And we'll talk with you soon.